Hello and welcome to this week's Positive Recovery with Karina being made for www.sobertownpodcast.com and my YouTube channel Positive Recovery with Karina. Well, this week I find myself away from home suddenly and without my cookie jar, but I do have my trusted book. So I'm going to um, read from my book again today, but I'm just going to open it up. I've got my eyes closed even. Open it up and, oh gosh, um, well, I've gone to suicide actually. So let's go with this. I know I've done a podcast on suicide before, but There was obviously a reason I was meant to open this today on this. Hopefully it's going to help somebody out there. Suicide. By the time you finish reading this section, somewhere in the world, another two people would have taken their own life. And a further person every 40 seconds after that. Between 2001 and 2018, suicide was the leading cause of death for 20 to 34 year olds in the UK. It remains the leading cause of death for men under the age of 45 in the UK. Alcohol is present in a third of all suicide cases. Alcohol may take the edge off of all suicidal thoughts, but it can also numb our super ego and makes us less rational. Suicidal thoughts come to many of us during our life, but the important thing is to reach out, talk about them and keep ourselves safe until they pass. Writing a safety plan can really help, or having a safety box with photos, happy memories and self-soothing items in. Stay Alive is also a great app for your phone. Remember that every thought and feeling will pass. Our job is to keep ourselves safe until it does. There is a short podcast on this on my YouTube channel. So I've given an example here of a safety plan which might be When I feel I cannot keep myself safe, I will. And on my example, I've put talk to mum, talk to Angela, talk to the Samaritans. And the Samaritans numbers in the UK is a free number. It's 116123. You can also get to them online as well. I will get help from mum and Sarah next door. And then I will go to my safe place. And my example is my bedroom. I will calm myself by listening to music, lighting candles, stroking my furry cushion or a cuddly teddy. Other ideas for keeping myself safe, have a bath, ask friends or mum to come round or visit friends. So if you have suicidal thoughts and consider writing your own safety plan now. So your headings are, um, to when I feel I cannot see, keep myself safe, I will talk to. So think about who it is you would talk to. Who would you get help from? So get help from. Who would you get help from? Go to my safe place. And you can have more than one. I will calm myself by. And then other ideas to help keep me safe. Also, I mentioned on there about superego, because I said about alcohol, it numbs our superego. So what is our superego? And it's the reason I'm going to that is because in my book that is in bold. So it will point you to, to other areas to go and read. So the superego, when I can find it, <laughs> if I'm flicking away through, um, is a okay. So superego. Is another of Freud's theories of the mind. He calls it uber ick, the over eye, the critical and moral side of us, working with our id and our ego. You know that conversation in our heads when our id wants to drink now, our ego wants to be with the in crowd, and our super ego is reminding us of our commitment and what we want to achieve. The good, the bad, and the ugly, all having a rumble in the jungle, and the next morning, It's our superego that will be filling us with regret if we have succumbed or filling us with joy if we have won. So this covers three things, the superego, the id and the ego, which is what Freud talks about. So I'll just go to to ego because that will give you a little bit more information. So one of Freud's theories of the mind, Freud actually called it das ich, the I. It is realistic and organised and mediates between the part of us that wants something right now, our id, and our more rational side, which is our superego, which is trying to keep us heading in the right direction. This is the part of us responsible for our self-esteem, confidence and jealousy. 
It also compares us to others and fills us with the fear of missing out or FOMO. It is the little trickster part that tells us that just one drink will be okay, when deep down we know that it won't. It is our gossiping mind and constantly trying to confuse us with things that are not actually real. Our ego is the view we have of ourselves and what we build around us to make us feel safe. This is who we think we are and what life has made us. But who are we truly? Some say we can only find this in the science of meditation. This section may become clearer if you now read about the id and the superego. So I've already read about the superego, so let's just go to the id. Um, just bear with me. I, I, D, the id. Okay. So id is from Freud's Das S, the it. The id is not organised and realistic like our ego and superego. It is our unconscious desire and works on instinct. I want it and I want it now. Think of babies and toddlers. We feed them on their demand. Their read does not know about waiting. With time, explanation and development of our egos, we slowly learn to wait, even if it is begrudgingly. Once we learn acceptance, we don't mind waiting. No more anger or frustration. It just is. But beware. Uh, it also likes to do push-ups in the corner and makes us spit our dummies out. So we talked there about acceptance as well, which is one of my key key words. And there is a whole podcast on acceptance as well um, on on Sober Town and on my YouTube tra- channel. So, what is acceptance? It is a small word with a huge impact and makes for a happier and easier life. Resistance makes us sad, angry, frustrated and depressed. It keeps us stuck. Accept what is. Accept what's done. Accept your areas of control. Accept that we only ever have this moment. I assure assure you it will be easier by the time you get to the end of this book. For example, you've quit drinking. Others around you continue to drink. You resent this. You think they should quit to support you. It's triggering your addict voice. You can't beat them, so join them. You're battling with yourself. And then you can go into battle with them. If you accept your sobriety as your choice and the fact that others have the right to their own choices, it will be easier. Let others be. Accept that this is not their journey. It is yours. I've got my fingers in lots of pages here because there's lots of highlighted words in in these, which I'll come back to to some of them or just highlight them for you. I'm just going to mention about choice there because this is a really, really important thing. We always have a choice. This may make some of you bristle, by the way. Even if we are kidnapped and chained, we have a choice on how we react and respond. Actually, that's how alcohol made me feel in the end. Kidnapped and chained. We may feel we don't have a choice, but we are never as helpless as we feel when it comes to addiction. We do have choices to continue as things are, continue with change or leave the situation. Try writing out for and against lists for each option. The answer will become glaringly obvious. Here's an example to get you started and then you can have a go. I just want to say though, you know, you can use this. I've used this for for many, many years in all aspects about relationships, house moves, jobs, whatever. So although I've put this towards alcohol, you can use this choice for each thing. So the choice is we have, again, is to to stay with how it is, to continue with change or to change it completely. So we can continue to the fours to continue drinking. So the good things about that is I can numb. I can forget, I can block pain. Against, the cost, anxiety, depression, pain, deceit, guilt, dying inside and dying. And all of these are headings actually in my book. You can look up all of those. Continue drinking with change. I'll give my body a rest by reducing. That's one thing for it. The against, the anxiety around when I can have my next drink. Moody, cravings, physical and emotional withdrawal in between drinking times. I will need more and more to be back to full-time drinking again. 
And that's kind of what we call moderation, which many of us find we cannot moderate. So to stop drinking, so this is to change altogether. So to four, to save money, health, better mood, work through trauma, be present for others, have good relationships, less physical and emotional pain, no drinking remorse, regret or guilt, feel happy. Against these reasons not to stop drinking, I will feel my emotions, no comfort blanket. It will be hard work. Others won't like it. Um, I can't actually think of anything else. And again, even things like comfort blanket and that uh, are in the book. So all of those sort of things I've just read, you know, you can read other bits. So comfort blanket, for example, for years, many of us have had used alcohol as our comfort blanket to protect us from life and our feelings. Keep us emotionally safe whilst putting ourselves and others at great physical and emotional risk. Stopping drinking is like having our comfort blanket whipped away from us and leaving us out in the cold. Another reason why we need our community to com comfort and support us and keep us warm. And one of the things that we're trying to grab that back to us is our addict voice, because that did come up when I was talking about acceptance. So what is our addict voice? For new people starting out, you might not be aware of that. But we use our, this term a lot is we talk about our addict voice. It's there, trying to convince us that it's okay to drink. It is our ego, and it wants us to fit in and not miss out on anything. Some people give their voice a name. We need the wine witch, Dementor, Gin Genie, Booze Baron, Stacy, Pennywise. Just know it, recognise it, and have a plan for when it comes calling, because it will. You've done so well. Have one to celebrate. Go on, have one. One won't hurt. You've not had a drink for a few weeks. You can do this. Just drink every now and again. And I love this from another of my sabre friends who called her addict voice, Little Bastard. In the beginning, I envisaged this little spoilt demon gremlin child throwing addiction tantrums. I could see Little Bastard stomping his foot and throwing itself on the ground, pounding out its fury. On bad days, I would pick up that little shit up and spank the hell out of it and send it to the corner. Sounds abusive? Absolutely. I hated that thing and I was so tired of it trying to convince me that I was better off dead. And that was written by Chow Gypsy on the 16th of April 2022 and she was 500 plus days sober. And that is the truth, unfortunately, is that our addict voice will get us to a place of slow suicide almost that's definitely definitely how I felt it was towards the end but this is the truth about drinking drinking is hard bloody work when the addiction takes hold yes it's fun at first I'm not going to deny that drinking can be fun we've all had some great nights out with friends it boosts our confidence makes us see the funny side of things and makes us laugh harder and longer until our sides hurt. But it also causes some very messy nights. Have you ever injured yourself when you've been drinking? How many fights are caused by alcohol? How many suicides? Eventually drinking can become a lonely, sad and isolated habit where all the fun has gone from every aspect of our life. This is something I wrote on my WordPress blog 10 months before I quit. So my whole blog is around living positively with fibromyalgia, but I have slumped and I felt it equally important to share. For the last 10 days, I've got up, but not gone out. I've done some of my daily maintenance plan, but not all. Today, I went out with my relator for a stroll. The motivation? To buy brandy, the worst thing for fibro. My alcohol consumption has been going up and up, and today on my walk, I asked myself why. Is it because I feel I'm dying inside? I'm once again trying to numb or maybe speed along the process. I even dreamt last night about all my physical tests being fine, apart from my liver levels, a physical answer to a physical cause. I don't think I could ever take an assertive back to end my life now, but I'm not belittling those that do. But maybe I could take a slow way out. Have I not been doing that subtly, subtly for 20 years anyway? I feel safe saying this, especially when people are out there dying when they don't want to. 
but aren't we all dying slowly anyway? Thankfully, I no longer recognise that person. And I really, really don't. Um, we talked earlier about the, the fear of missing out. It is scary when we first get sober because we do pull that comfort blanket off and we all these feelings come out and it's like, whoa, no, it's scary, but we have to work through it all. And once we work through it all, it is so joyful. Uh, it is amazing. But I don't have the fear of missing out anymore. I have what we call JOMO, which is the joy of missing out. And I'm going to put, read here, the JOMO, I love this phrase. The joy of missing out, no more FOMO here. The thought of going to a noisy bar full of drunk people, bustling my way through a 10 deep throng to get a drink and getting covered in mine and other people's drinks actually makes me feel physically sick these days. I cannot think of anything worse. Our times have changed. The old me couldn't understand why people went to a coffee shop or cafes when there was a perfectly good pub next door that served alcohol at 11am. Now I completely get it. I love me a little coffee or tea shop now. And as for a quaint little cafe, the pubs can eat their hearts out. So I'm just wanting to share this. I want to share things that things do change. Things can change. And right at the end of my book, I say, take care. No luck needed. You have all the magic and gold you need right there inside of you. Because we really do. We just have to find it. And with that, I'm just going to end with the parable of the beggar. G-H-I-J-G. <laughs> yeah, about the alphabet, I should know it so well. So this is the parable of the beggar. The treasure you seek is within you. And it's from Eckhart Tolle's book, The Power of Now, which is another fantastic book. A beggar had been sitting by the side of a road for over 30 years. One day, a stranger walked by. Spare some change, mumbled the beggar, mechanically holding out his old baseball cap. I've nothing to give you, said the stranger. Then he asked, what's that you're sitting on? Nothing, replied the beggar, just an old box. I've been sitting on it for as long as I can remember. Ever looked inside, asked the stranger. No, said the beggar, what's the point? There's nothing in there. Have a look inside, insisted the stranger. The beggar managed to pry open the lid. With astonishment, disbelief and elation, he saw that the box was filled with gold. And very often in our drinking career, we miss all the gold. I mean, I, I can't believe all the magic that is around me now, all the beauty that is around me. It's always been there. I just didn't see it. I just saw all the misery and the horrible stuff. And I just, you know, kept on drinking it all away because everything was so awful but actually it's not we get sober and work through stuff and we find the magic and I will definitely finish with this one magic we have always had this we often look around for a fairy godmother a genie or the ground to open us up and swallow us whole we make wishes when we blow out our birthday candles when we pull the wishbone or to overcome superstition catch yourself next time you think or say I wish and ask yourself what is it I really want? What part of that is within my control? What can I do to achieve this? Look deep inside, take back the reins, and if it's time, make the drink disappear. I hope you've enjoyed that. My book is available on Amazon worldwide, even in India now, um, and it's called The A to Z of Alcohol and Sobriety by Karina Alderton. You can get it on Kindle, in the UK, it's on Kindle Unlimited. It's four ninety nine in Kindle in the UK. It's less than well, it's $9.99 for the paperback, and there's also a hardback version. But it's cheaper than a drink, and it will just show you where to start. There's just so much good stuff in it. It's packed full of information and support to help you feel less alone and encourage you to be more curious and make decisions and choices about your own drinking or sobriety journey. Take care for now, not another drop, no matter what, and I'll catch you again real soon. Bye-bye.